Okay. Bowls. When creating bowls, step one and step two, centering and opening, are still the exact same process. Centering hasn't changed. <clears throat> opening is still the exact same. It's at step three that you really start to change your technique. <clears throat> when we're throwing cylinders, the way that I teach you guys is to open that base and leave a lot of your bulk clay at the top here so you're not opening very wide. Also, the way that I teach you to open your base for cylinders or cups is a nice flat bottomed base. In a bowl, you need to think of that interior dimension and that interior dimension's job is to funnel that last bit of soup into one perfect teaspoon of liquid. So if you have a flat bottom, when you open this base here, what you're creating is essentially a dog bowl, those big flat bottom dog dishes that are good for lapping, but not really convenient or functional for that last spoonful of soup or melted ice cream, whatever the case may be. So as I open this, what you're gonna see is a big difference is that the mouth of this is A, going to open a lot, open a lot wider than it would in the cylinder demonstration, but B, down here in the base, the base is going to be curved. I'm allowing that base to curve up um, like a funnel or like a curved interior shape of a bowl. So as I open this, Notice that mouth getting wider. So you'll see here as I begin to open this, the mouth is much wider than when I would open with a cylinder. Once you've opened your bowl form, I really encourage you to compress that lip, especially if you have uh, clay that is produced in the classroom that is not pugged or um, de-aired. Uh, you'll want to compress this so that your clay can stretch and reach maximum width without tearing. It's really important that you compress your lip right now. You can compress that with a sponge, fold that lip, or fold that sponge over top of the lip. You can compress it with your finger. Whatever the case is, you need to minimize any stretching that you get because we're all, we are causing it to get wider. We're not making vertical development. That will cause tears in this outer wall or outer lip with our classmate clay. If you're working with boxed clay, usually it's not a problem. Okay, so we've opened our base. Step uh, four is to begin throwing that vertical development. When you're throwing a cylinder, that right hand is often in charge leading it up towards kind of a central axis so that you're gaining vertical height. For a bowl, your left hand is going to take charge and draw it out wider. So you'll see here, I'll start with a standard little pinch like I would the cylinder, but my left hand is directing and allowing this clay to become wider than it is tall. So here I'm starting at that base with a gentle pinch and just maintaining the width and distance of my hands as this bowl begins to progress in its shape. After that first pull, again, I come back and I compress that lip, ensuring that if there's any tearing or stretching, I minimize that. Again, after your first pull, I would come back and compress that lip, especially with classmate clay. Compress that lip so that your clay can continue to stretch in that bowl-like form. Again, I'm going to go all the way back down to the bottom. Give it a standard or firm pinch and begin to stretch that form wider, wider, wider. Notice my wheel speed is at a medium to slow speed, definitely not fast. As your piece starts to get wider and wider, those centrifugal forces or the speed alone can cause it to whip off center. So I'm, I'm maintaining a pretty medium to slow speed. Again, my left hand is taking the lead here and asking for that bowl to begin to take shape. Now after two or three pulls, you're gonna start establishing kind of this general foundation of a bowl. 
there are a couple things that I want you to consider before you proceed to those kind of final uh, housekeeping or, or cleanup phases. I want you to consider what type of bowl you're going to create. Are you making a cereal bowl? Are you making a bowl for chili and chowders? Are you making a bowl for salsas or dishes that are meant to be scooped out with a chip? All of those bowls have different shapes and forms that make the user's life a little bit easy. So for example, if I were making this into a salsa bowl or a guacamole bowl, have you ever gone to a party, dipped your chip in, and the salsa just plops out and over of the bowl? That's because that bowl is not designed for salsa. It's not designed for chili scooping or a guacamole scooping. If you create a bowl that has a lip that's gently cupped in, as you scoop that chip, the lip is gonna plop that salsa or dish right back into your bowl. Um, so that bowl is like part of the, the eating experience. It's helping you uh, get that food. It's like a delivery method. Um, so for something like that, at the second or third pull, um, I would do a couple different things. Um, a, so let's, let's pretend that I want a guacamole bowl here. A, I'm going to remove all that water from the interior. B, I'm going to remove any finger lines from the inside with my metal rib. I'm not trying to scrape clay or remove clay. I'm compressing the clay so that I get a nice compression down at the base and so that there's no weird ratcheting or washboarding on the inside. As I'm creating this bowl, I'm going to consider the interior dimensions, making sure that I remove any finger ribs so that there's no awkward experience of a spoon scraping up and making that kind of awful washboard sound. Um, and also, as I begin to compress with the metal rib, I'm going to be stretching this lower section so that I have more volume and more space to hold the, the food that's going to be placed inside. So with this metal rib, I'm not scraping or removing clay. I'm just compressing it back into itself. And as I get towards the outer walls here, my left hand is not doing anything. It's just acting as a catcher. If my right hand does a twitch or if my right hand, um, you know, does something unpredicted <laughs> or catches that clay, this left hand is just out here catching, um, not manipulating the clay. So again, I'm down here at the base and you should start seeing the base of this bowl starting to stretch out and gain a bit more volume. And this is just a standard stretching technique. And then as I begin to work up the side walls here, I'm also going to begin to stretch because I want this to have volume for maybe three, uh, three avocados or depending on how big your parties are, you may want six avocados to fit in there. So as I'm doing this, my left hand is out here just kind of catching. It's not manipulating the clay. It's just catching if my right hand um, tremors or something. But you should notice the clay on the outside is starting to stretch. So I've cleaned up that whole inner lip. You'll see it starting to stretch on the outside here. And then that final lip, and this lip is still fairly thick, so I'll do one more gentle pull just here on the lip. I'm allowing that lip to kind of cup ever so gently. It's not an aggressive cupping. I'm allowing that lip to kind of cup back in on itself. Again, as usual, I'm compressing this lip just to ensure that I have a nice, smooth, condensed surface. On the outside, I can manage any cosmetic transitions out here that formally don't mesh with it or are abrupt. And this here would be a standard salsa or a large guacamole bowl. This would be a six avocado guacamole bowl. <laughs> but again, you're noticing that cup that works towards the user's advantage and is helping, helping that person out. Uh, another option for creating bowls is something like a uh, chili, like hot, hot chili on a winter day or chowder bowls. Those bowls oftentimes have a flared lip. 
And that flare lip is designed for service so that your server doesn't have to hold a hot bowl in their hand as they're delivering it to you. And B, they don't have to stick their thumb into the food that you are being served. Um, so by creating that flat rimmed bowl, they have an area to A, lift and set while not spilling the, the soup or chili and not burning their hands. Um, so to kind of modify this one, to create one of those chili or soup style bowls, nice and fluid again. On the outside, my, uh, my left hand isn't doing anything, it's there just catching. With my right hand, I'm taking that metal rib and I'm folding down this outer lip into my left hand to catch that shape, to catch that rim, if you will. You can make this as big, as wide, as thin, or as thick as you want, but you get the general idea that with something like this, my hand could reach underneath it, I could pinch it, so that as a server, I could place this and not spill the soup and not burn myself in the delivery of that soup. By adding this lip, again, you're creating an object that is designed for service, that is designed for the style of food that it's going to be used to deliver. I'm using my metal rib not to scrape, but to compress, and my left hand is just catching. It's not manipulating the clay. It's just down there catching. And I would fold this lip over, over, over. folding until I create a rim that is lovely for a server's hand to fit underneath it so that they can lift without A, spilling it, or B, without um, them having to stick their hand within that, that food. Um, again, after I do that, you'll often get little flares from the slip, so I would go in with my sponge or chamois to compress that lip so that it's nice and, and clean and sharp and compressed. And then also kind of the final last little step here is removing that suction cup just like you would with the cylinder. The one thing that I'd like to warn you about with this kind of final cleanup and this final suction cup is it's really tempting to do a sharp angle as you remove this internal or this base suction cup. Don't cut it too severe because what will happen is you will create a ballerina foot, a foot that's very tiny and tipsy. Um, I can hear Emmett cleaning over there, like banging around. <laughs> uh, so while I'm cutting this, I'm cutting actually off less than I would if I had a cylinder. This is just to establish a line, a clean, centered line, so that when I come to trim it, I have an easier time. I'm not cleaning off or I'm not trimming a big clunk of, of material. Out here on the base, down here at the very bottom, that tip, that standard suction cup that I encourage people to remove, it's really tempting to want to remove a large amount of this, but I want to warn you to remove less than you think you'll need, primarily because you don't want to create a ballerina foot on this bowl. You want the bowl to be nice and stable so that it's not tipsy or, um, I don't know, just what would you call that, precarious? You don't want it to have a precarious foot, you want a nice stable foot. So out here you'll see, by comparison to my other demonstrations, I remove a lot less of this bottom suction cup. Uh, with your final phases, as with uh, the cylinder, I still splash that little splash of water on the far side, taking my wire tool taut and pressing it under my thumbs, grabbing that water and raking it underneath so it helps to release it. And then we also have these kind of pot lifters, if you will, that will help you lift up bowls. If you try to pick up a bowl like you would a cylinder, oftentimes it will cave in or taco in on itself. So these are handy little tools to help you lift up your bowl without tacoing it. And then you would set it on your, uh, your bat once you're finished. Same thing goes, I splash that bout of water um, on the far side taking my wire tool nice and taut with my thumbs pressing down, and I grab that water and scrape underneath. Oftentimes with bowls, because those feet are so wide, I'll do a double scrape with that. And we have a variety of pot lifters here in the classroom that you can use that you can slip underneath the forms. 
and lift so that you don't taco that bowl or so that you don't accidentally fold it. If you try to lift it with your hands, you'll misshape it or deform it just by the act of simply lifting. So with bowls, I typically lift them with these pot holders and would set it on its according bat to, to begin its drying process and wait for trimming.